Hello and welcome back all of you to our Oakland Athletics Sim. Or should I say, you know, the Athletics Sim. First of all, I'm going to say uh, thank you very much for the comments um, a couple of videos ago. Obviously, I asked upon, you know, what you guys would like. If you would like me to sort of um, relocate over to Las Vegas or stay in Oakland. And it does seem like more of you are in favour of me going over to Las Vegas. So... That's something I'm probably looking to do at the start of next season. I'll probably get that expansion done. Expansion, sorry. Um, that relocation done and move over to Las Vegas for the start of next year. So if there's any of you, more of you who are against that, please do let me know um, by dropping a comment on this video. I, you know, giving you another chance. Um, if that's something you'd rather see for me to stay in Oakland, I can do so. But jumping straight back into things here, we're at the 1st of August here. So we've got, what, a couple of months left in this season and we are tied um, with the Angels. Uh, one more loss, one more win. Um, you know, things looking good for us really here. Um, I'm probably going to finish out the season in this video. Um, I did go through and made a few changes to the minors, sort of um, bring a few people up, um, send a few people down. Um, if I go through to DSL, I did up Hader, Hus Husman, Husman, uh, Cambrellan, put them all up to DSL. I got 41 in there now though, so I probably, well, I mean, yeah, wow. I probably will <laughs> look to clear this out, um, very soon, you know, get rid of a few more, because I've probably got a fair, a fair few, um, too many people in here. So we'll go out and do that at some point. But um, I cleared out the international complex, done that. There's still a few people in there. Um, they're all like 17, 16 years of age. Um, but as well as that, obviously, everything's going great. I mean, I think Dylan Adkins has started off really, really well um, in the rookie league. And same with Papano as well. Both of them have started off really, really well and are probably realistically good enough to go up to Able. But I'm probably going to keep them in there in Rookie League for the rest of the season because they are only 18 and probably look to jump them up to Able at the start of next season if they are good enough, which is looking like they are. Um, same as well as that, I don't think anyone else have been playing very well. I mean, Aiden Harris is above league average. He's still only 18, though. He drafted him, what, a couple of years ago now? Well, last season. Sorry, and um, this is his second year in rookie ball, and um, been above league average both times, but he hasn't r fully developed yet. I say fully, obviously, we nowhere near that, but um, enough to come up to a ball. Um, Mullinax is starting to struggle, um, in a ball, which is unfortunate to see this year. Obviously, was, he had a really good year in rookie ball last year. He was our first round pick. I, ho I was hoping he'd hit the ground running. And Abel, he's starting to struggle a little bit, so hopefully he can turn that around. Um, a few players have brought up to high A. Um, Jose Melendez has came up, started off really, really well. I mean, this batting profile is really, really good here. So um, hopefully that does continue. Um, in terms of that, just how things are looking. Um, obviously, we've got a really, really good minor league system. Um, Paulino, number nine prospect in baseball, still in AAA, hasn't really batted well and isn't developing unfortunately so hopefully that does change and turn around because he is 24 years of age already so I'm hoping he does really start to get some development um DeLuca's still down here you know batting really really well so maybe there's an opportunity for him to come back up if someone you know starts um performing quite you know quite not so well in the majors and then Lorenzo Carey as well I do want to quickly mention he's looking really really he's a number 73 prospect now um, what drafted? Drafted? What was he drafted this year? No, he was drafted last year. Sorry. Um, in the yeah twenty twenty four draft. Um, yeah, played rookie ball last year. Obviously, came up and he's been fantastic in A ball, high A ball. Um, and then I moved him up to double A, and he's been really, really good. But um, what I'll probably do is I'll probably first. Play out the first couple of series here, and then I'll probably sim to September. Um, we'll make a couple of call ups, and then we'll run through September and see how we get on. I mean, realistically, it's looking like we will make the playoffs. We're two games ahead of the wild card spot, but um, obviously, crazier things have happened. So, 
I'm hoping that we do continue to do very well. Obviously, with that, Matt Chapman is out. Three weeks injury. Um, which is not good to see. So, it, you know, it's not like we got a weak um, infield as it is anyway. Obviously, Jack Moss is looking really, really good here. Um, the first base. You've got, obviously, Daryl Hanayas as well. Um, he's having a great year. Gage Workman, a shortstop. And then... Um, as well as that, you know, Scurfield Sands been really, really good in the outfield this year. And um, Pacheco, in it, what, 23 games since he came up, 166 OPS plus. Hopefully that does continue from him. And we got Cody Bellinger at centre field. I believe I'm starting him at centre field. I'm starting Estrue Ruiz, who is cold and he's been horrendous this year. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to. I'm going to bring Cody Bellinger in and Estra Ruiz out. Leave it like that for now. Um, Where's Estra Ruiz? Yeah, I think I'm more than happy with that. I'm going to leave it like that for now. And um, obviously our rotation's looking really really good obviously Joelvis jo Del Rosario has came up now um he's had some mighty development this year and he's you know he's looking really really good as a starting option for us alongside obviously Montgomery and uh Isilo here so what we will do we'll jump through these first couple of series so we're up against the Dodgers first and foremost with Arias we get 7-3 loss unfortunately who was pitching in that? JP Sears gave up eight hits, five runs. Oof. Um, home run for Bellinger. Couple of doubles for Hanayas. Double for Workman. Freeman and Miguel Vargas played well for them. Couple of hits for Pacheco I saw, saw there as well. Logan Webb as well here is now at the Dodgers. On a massive contract by the looks of it. 17.2 million this year and then another five years at 24.2 million. Wow, okay. Um, right, so up against Logan Webb with Joelvis. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm, I'm assuming it's Joelvis or Joelvis Del Rosario up against Logan Webb here. And it's an 8-2 loss. Not a great start here. Langoliers hit a home run. So did Doyle. Del Rosario gave up seven runs in two innings. Okay, wow. Um, the thing is, you know, I do want to keep him here because he does. I do feel like he is good enough to be up here. Um, Ryan Pepia up against his eye low here. Three one loss. Wow. Okay. Um. We're re you know we're <laughs> really starting to dive bomb here. Um, why? Um, so we're up against the Colorado Rockies here. Carson Montgomery, come on, let's get a win back under our belt. An eight-five loss. Wow. Okay, so four loss streak here. Um, losing streak of four, and Montgomery's been awful. It's our pitching for some reason has been horrendous. Um, Doyle with three hits. Chris Bryant had a single and two doubles. Right now it's JP Sears is back. Come on, we expected something better. 3 2 loss. Okay, so now we're four and a half games back of the Angels. We started this episode off tied, and now we're four and a half games back. Um, still two games ahead in the of the wild card, um, but we're going to have to improve or we're not going to make the playoffs this year. Simple as that. Um, so Luis Gill up against Juelvis Del Rosario and a 5-4 loss. So, oh my, <laughs> really not good to see this. Okay, um, right. So how has this even came about? Schedule. So we've got what? One, two, three, six losses, seven loss streak, seven we're on a losing streak of seven. Okay, this is not good to see. Um, So, Del Rosario, Montgomery and Ruiz have been very cold. I mean, Montgomery I'm not going to send down. Del Rosario I'm not going to send down. 
Eshu Ruiz, I moved him to the bench. Oh, really not good to see this. Hanais is up to a 70 grade hitter. Susak is up to a 65 potential. So right, what I will do is I will probably advance. I'll probably I'll say about the 20th, I will say. Just because... So the end, yeah. So the end of this um, Cincinnati Red series, just to sort of double, double back in there, because it's really not gone well at all. Starting off with a six-loss streak uh, this month, so I double back in there and sort of let you know how it's been going on for the rest of the month, and then we'll finish the month off before we get into September call-ups. Right, so we're back, and it's not good no news at all. Um. It's probably the worst month we've had um, <laughs> in this series. Um, it's been awful. Um, we actually went up to... So obviously we had that one loss carrying over from last month. And we went up to... What? Nine or ten loss, <laughs> losses in a row. We're, we're four, and th four and 13 for the month. Um... Really, really poor. Um, the only thing I could hope that will turn it around is that Matt Chapman is back from an injury. Um, his last four games, I say his last four games, his two games since getting back, he's had a, he's saw what, three three runs in two games with a hit in each, including the homer in the last game. We actually um, won our last game 15-2. to two. Um against the uh, Cincinnati Reds after losing that series to the after you know going two games down in that series losing the series losing the series to Miami the series before that and um we really needed something big like this um plenty of hits plenty of runs scored really really good to see hopefully this is something we can expect to continue as Arlo had a good game as well um 11 strikeouts over six innings only two runs given up um, but the month in the whole, we've got slipped to seven games back of the Angels, and we are actually outside of the wild card spot now. We're not even in the playoffs, so we're really going to have to step it up a whole lot. If I'm honest, if we <laughs> if we want to make the playoffs, we need to turn it around because it hasn't been good enough. I made a couple of changes. I said a couple of changes. I um I brought up Johnny DeLuca. Who you know hasn't been great in MLB. He hasn't played any games yet. That was at the start of the year. Um, but in Triple A, he had a one five three OPS plus. He was batting really really well. I'm hoping he can come up and provide a hot bat. Something we need. He's not starting by any means, but um, he did come off. At, he did come up, and I did send down Matt Gorski, who just was not having a good year at all. You know, seventy nine OPS plus hasn't been good with a bat at all. But, you know, really in the hole, obviously Jalukas has just came back up, but Shea Langoliers is just the only guy who's been really significantly below average. Um, we've been really, really good um, with our offence this year. Um, the pitching, we had a couple of pitches. I mean, Ken Waldchuk hasn't been his usual self. Roy Basalinas is really having an off year for some reason. I'm not sure how that's come about because these um, pitching ratings are fantastic. Um Joelvis Rosario, De Rosario has been disappointing since coming up. Um, but he was great in AAA, so I saw no reason why he couldn't come up and be well. I'm going to leave him up here for now. Um, he's, his ERA plus is way, way worse than his fit. But he's, he's, you know, he's got a 410 Babip. He's getting such bad luck, really, in regards to that. I mean, he is giving up two home runs per nine, but um. Hopefully he can improve from here. But obviously Matt Chapman coming up will, you know, hopefully add a fair bit more to the line. You know, it's a 139 OPS plus this year before getting injured. He was fantastic. So hopefully we can turn this around for the rest of this month. We will play that out before September call-ups. Call we start with a 4-2 loss against the, <laughs> the um, Red Sox. So we're up against Garrett Whitlock here with J.P. Sears. And a 6-4 loss. 
JP says eight hits and three runs. Zach Jackson with the loss there with three runs and two innings. Christian Arroyo with two home runs for the Red Sox. With three games back now. That was a I didn't actually realise how important of a game that was, obviously given their fighting out for the wildcard spot with us. Um, so Brian Matter up against Joel Del Rosario here. Not feeling good about this one. 4-1 loss. Um, we've completely nosedived. In over one month, I have no idea how this has happened. Where this has came from. The team's just completely tanked and nosedived. I did have a look in the chemistry and... I mean, they're content. It's nothing like it had been. Younger's really unhappy for some reason. Um... Unhappy with his role and team chemistry. He thinks the club lacks leadership. Also, we don't have a no captain, but we do have two leaders. So I was hoping that that would be okay. Um, but there's not much, a whole lot we can do right now. So we're literally going to have to just continue and hope that they two turn around. They have been so good up until this month. So I don't know. There's no real reason why this has happened, if I'm honest. From what I can see myself. Um, you know, if you see any reason down but you know, do let me know down below. But this is awful. And it's really, you know, ruined my trust in a lot of these guys. You know, I thought I could rely on to perform and they have been awful this month. So Garrett Crochet up against Zylo, probably the one pitcher I could thought I could rely on, and we score no runs and give up four. And Zylo gave up four runs himself over six innings. Schreiber came in and done a good job, but um it's just not good enough, I'm afraid. Um, Ken Walderchuk, 4 0 win, that's better. F finally. Finally. Um, Albert Suarez here, up against Carson Montgomery. Come on. Let's get a little bit of a win streak going, that's it. That's what I like to see. 7 6 win. A few doubles. Schofield Sam, three hits, two hits for Chapman, two hits for Moss. Because Moss, you know, his ratings are really are fantastic. You know, I really expect him to kick on. Um, he has, he does have a one three seven OPS plus. So it's not like he's been poor this year at all. Um, right, Jackson Job. We'll finish out this month with JP Sears here. Let's get another little win streak. Of course not. Four three loss. Casey Mize up against Shuelvis Del Rosario in a 6-1 win. Let's get above 500 at least. Glenn, Glenn Workman, Gage Workman. Sorry, I, I don't know why I keep calling him Glenn. Um, with a 120 OPS plus. With a couple of homers there. Up to 15 home runs for the year and a 120 OPS plus. Which is really good to see here. Hanais with three hits. Um, Yondre Rojas. 3-1 loss, and let's finish off the month with Tyler Holton here, up against Ken Waldachuk, and we get the win, thank God. Paulino's actually started to improve, at least here. 101 OPS plus now, he's above league average, and you know, above league average isn't quite um what you would like, though, obviously you'd like a bit better than that. Um, Moises Hernandez has added a screwball, but it's not any good. Um, Jefferson Jean Palafox in, D in the DSL Dominican Rookie League Cardenas how is he doing put him up to Abel not <laughs> not very well by the looks of it um, Poisson Paulinho De Lucas improved defensively at left field and he's actually above league average now. So he's actually someone who's had came down to AAA, really started to kick on a bit, and he's came back up to the majors, and he's starting to play very well, which is good to see. Um, right, so who are we going to bring up? I mean, for a start, I think Gardair has to come up to strengthen up the bullpen. He's not on the secondary roster. I will have to... Hmm. I'm going to DFA Cabrera 
and bring up Gardea. Do I bring up another pitcher in Gin? Because it's not like our bats have really been letting us down, if I'm honest. I mean, Angeles hasn't been good at all there. So I might actually just send him down and bring up another infield to replace him. How's Castagnosi doing? doing? Very well, by the looks of it, actually. But I do think potentially I'll leave him where he's at for now. Because he can develop a little bit further than that. I think Max Muncy can come up. Angeles can come down. Max Muncy can come up. And then, is there anyone that really sticks out to me? Not particularly, if I'm honest. Like, Luca Tresh hasn't been batting well in AAA. Neither has Oscar Colas. Yeah, a couple of those guys have been real disappointments, if I'm honest. Um, Toli has been great. Um, I just don't know where he would get time. I mean, with any of these guys, I don't know where they would get time, if I'm honest. I might well just send up JT again. The only thing is I'd have to make another 40 roster spot. I might well send up Berroa then. Oh, do I? What about Chris Matt? How is he doing doing? You know what? I'm going to send up Nabil Chris Matt. You can come up. Pitch out of the bullpen. He's also not on the 40 man. Okay. Hmm. Well, Oscar Colas can get DFA'd and Nabil Krismat can come up. And then if I sort out of the bullpen, hopefully sorts that out. Krismat's in middle relief, same as Gardea. Um, and then if I just head over to the lineups, every eighth. You know what? Every 10th. And we head into September. Hopefully this is a massive turnaround from last month. And that was just a blip on the season. But realistically it's still looking like we can make the playoffs here. The rest of the division has been awful. Astros, Rangers, Mariners have been, all been awful. The Angels this year have been fantastic. Ben Brown, Katayama, Severino, Griffin Canning. They've got rid of Otani and they've been even better. It's MJ Melendez, though, is a really, really good pickup here. He's batting really, really well for them. Um, Loriano still fantastic. 135 OPS plus. Maybe somebody got away from us. We should have held on to. But um, I'll, play, I'll play, definitely play through this A series and probably some of the divisional series games this month. Um, it's the divisional series, so it's some of the teams that are in our West Division. So we play this series up against the Angels here. And it's Carson Montgomery pitching first for us, who now has an ERA plus of below league average, even though his FIP is above league average. Is our defence just letting us down by any means? I mean, we're first in strikeouts, pitching war and FIP. But our defensive efficiency is 10th. Is I mean, the fact that our bullpen and starters ERA is fifth when their FIPs are first is <laughs> is not ideal. So maybe it's nothing really to do with the pitching, if I'm honest, then. I mean, I never thought it was, but um, sorry about that. So, yes, jumping into the, you know, the lineups and basically the defense, I don't see what the issue really is. Obviously, um, Dal Hanayas is a fantastic defender. I say fantastic. He's a good enough defender at second base. Um... We've obviously got Matt Chapman at third base, who may be, you know, he's gold glove worthy and a gold glove winner on many occasions, including last year at third base and the year before. Um, we've got Gage Workman at shortstop, who's a fantastic defender. Um, I don't know why the defence doesn't seem to be doing so well. Brenton Doyle out in right field is great. Um, Cody Bellinger's good enough at centre field. I mean, this... On the fringe, obviously, with the 65 out for range, really you would like it at in the 70 plus, but it's good enough for him to not be poor at that position. Yeah, he hasn't been bad. I mean, I don't know. How, <laughs> if honest, I go off the zone rating usually, and if that's positive, that's good to me. Um, Pacheco's been playing in a whole load of spots. 
Um, hasn't been fantastic defensively, to be fair, but um, not awful by any means. You know, he's, he's only played a bit in each position. How Schofield Sam been? Negative 4.8 zone rating in left field. Okay, that is not ideal to see. That may be where it's, well, I say where it's coming from. Not really, you know, part of it at least. Um, DeLuca, we got Susak as well. How's he been doing? Hasn't been good at catcher defensively, zone rating wise at least. I don't know a lot of these other stats if I'm honest. So if someone could let me know what this means, that'd be great. But, you know, he's got he's bang above league average at catcher. So, I'll take that, really. Um, I don't see where the problem is. Um, I really don't. So, we'll jump into this Angels series here. So, we've got Carson Montgomery up against Owen White to start with. And we go in with a 2-0 loss to start off with. We're now 9.5 games back, 1.5 games back of the wild card. And then... Ben Brown up against JP Sears here. 7-6 win. Every game is really starting to matter here. Loriano had two hits against us with a double. Glenn Workman with a home run. Same with Moss, Susak. Two hits for Pacheco. JP Sears gave up three runs in five innings. Blown save for Gardeo. Gave up three runs actually in what? Unless it was at his first game. Um, save for Jack Zach Jackson. Right, Patrick Sandoval, Juelvis Del Rosario. 7-1 loss, okay. And as Waldo Cabrera has been claimed by the Angels of all teams. Um, oh, oh, we'll play this series as well because we're up against... I, I say that, I don't necessarily think we need to. What I will do is I will jump through until... I mean, we've got this series up against the Angels. Maybe we'll jump back at the Angels series there on the 22nd. I'll skip through the rest of this. I mean, I say that. I say that. I mean, every every game at this point, I feel like, matters. So I'm just going to play through it. We'll jump, jump through this. We're up against the Rangers. So I'm quite indecisive. But I do think every game at this point is re does really matter. We're right on the fringes of the playoffs. And it's all our own fault. Um... We need to catch the Boston Boston Red Sox. Um, it's as simple as that. We need to go on a win, win streak. We're up against the Rangers to start with here, who are 61-73. I see no reason why we can't win this series. So, Zyla up against Michael Mercado. 3-1 win. Great start. Home run for Workman and Chapman. Two hits for Chapman there. Great. Eight innings pitched with zero runs scored for Zylo, who picks up the win. See, that's the difference having these guys is going to make in the long run, I do think. Um, so up against Jacob de Grom here with Carson Montgomery, who hasn't been good of late. An 11-1 win. This is what I was hoping we would see all throughout August and September. Home run for Workman and Susak. Five, five hits in five at-bats for Susak, who is hot now a 119 OPS plus at catcher. Three hits for Geloff, two hits for Chapman, obviously five for five for Susak, who got three runs, four RBI, two hits for Workman. He's done 20 home runs now. Wow. 24 row home runs he's got to hit, 5.8 war. He's hot at the moment, so is Susak, which is no surprise there. So we're 2 now up in this series. Let's finish it up, up against Glenn Otto with JP Sears, who hasn't been good this year. Um, Come on. Okay, 4-1 loss, which is you know, one and a half games back now of the Red Sox, though. So it's definitely, it's certainly doable, is what I will say. And at least there's no more worries behind us. Um, The AL, the AL really does seem to have been really poor this year for some reason. There's been a lot of poor teams. Um, Right, up against the... Up against the Rays here, sorry, um... So let's get through this. 12 Estelle Rosario up against Jalen Beeks. And we get the win. Thank God. So Oscar Colas cleared waivers. And we get the 2 1 win. Moss with a double. Pacheco and Susak the same. Not a great game offensively. 
But um, Del Rosario gave up five hits, but only one run over 6.2 innings. So he's starting to improve at least. So up against Shane Baz. Now, how is he looking? Not a great year. Let's get this win. Ken Walderchuk, he's having a similar year. Great uh, ERA plus, though. Um, up against Shane Baz with a 5-3 win. And we're above 500 now. Two, Pacheco with two home runs. Doyle with a home run. Same with Moss. Two hits for Pacheco. Both of them home runs. Schofield Sam with a couple of hits. Um, Pacheco with a 120 OPS plus since coming up. Taj Bradley here up against his ILO. Taj Bradley, yeah, I would have imagined he is looking very good. But he's not had a great year at all here with a below, below league average FIP. Was an all-star last year. Um, right. 6-5 loss. Okay, not ideal. A couple of hits for Nyers. Three for Bellinger. Two for Langoliers who came in. How did the pitching go? His ILO wasn't great. Zach Jackson really is disappointing there. Giving up two runs. And a run given up by Lucas. And then they... And then they got a run in the 10th. They gave up two runs in the 9th. And then it went to extras where we gave up another. That is not good to see. Um, How's it looking for news? Susak had obviously five hits in that game. Wonder Franco had a 20 game hit streak. How's he looking? Really I mean, 120 OPS plus, five and a half war. Looking like a great player there. Muller's out for 14 months. Obviously, we haven't seen much from him after he disappointed this year. Um, 14 months, though, that could spell the end for him here at the Athletics. Um, so, we've got this series against Seattle here. We're, in a, we're a half a game back of the Red Sox. We really need to step things up now for the rest of the year. Um in order to make the playoffs, which I'm hoping we really, really do. Um Carson Montgomery with a five two loss to start off is not good to see. And we're below five hundred again. JP Sears up against Josiah Gray with a one nil loss. And I mean Seattle Marin is a fifth what they were fifty five and eighty four before going into this game this series. I, I don't know how this has happened to the team, given where we're at. And a 7-2 win. I'm going to keep on saying it, but I'm, I'm really, really disappointed, if I'm honest. Um, Bellinger's batting around league average, but if he plays good enough defence, that's okay. Um, right, up against the Astros here, Isai Lowe pitching up against Brian Abreu, who has been... Have a good season, actually. A really good season here um, for the Astros here. Um, and they're starting to catch up. On a, I say catch up. Um, but the thing is, we don't have anyone who's cold. I don't seem... I don't quite know where it's coming from. There's no real standout, you know, poor performances. Um, Hanais has dropped off a little bit, though. He was at, what, batting about 320. And now he's... Back below 300. Um, Brian Abreu up against Zylo. 3-1 loss. And it just it seems to continue. 9-8 win. Thank God. Carson Montgomery with a 4-5 week injury. The only thing is now what do we do with this starting spot? I mean, Davis, Davison De Los Santos is actually looking really, really good there. Um... So, I mean, we don't necessarily we have we had 15 pitches. We don't necessarily need to bring anyone up. Um, what I will do is actually I'm gonna actually I will leave it at that just because um, Sears does seem to be pitching a lot of innings. I mean, I think I might well move Roy Basalanas into a starting spot, give him that chance. Hopefully he performs well. I'm, I'm really, really hoping he does because we we need it. If I'm honest, um, 
Obviously, there's an option with Chris Matt as well there, but um, he hasn't been pitching phenomenally. I mean, neither is Sananas, but he's actually starting to improve. At least he's at league average now, FIP-wise. Um, in terms of who to bring up, I mean, there's not much point bringing up someone like Davis and the Santa, De Los Santos at this point of the season, I don't think. I mean, he has other years on the 40-man, but um, obviously at third base, there's not much room for him. Um it's like Gelos below league average now. De Lucas and Cody Bellinger. Max Muncy as well there. I mean, Estrue Ruiz isn't even hitting, you know, league average in AAA here, which is not good to see. Um JT Ginn here. So who's starting? And Jay Tegin does seem to be doing quite well, but the stuff, I mean, obviously he would be a reliever if he came up. Um, you know what? I'm just going to bring Gorski up, back up. He's came down. He seems to be batting very, very well down AAA. I'll give him another chance. Now he's sort of heated his bat up a little bit more. Um, not that he's getting much game time by the looks of it. I'm not, I'm not going to bring him into a starting spot. I don't think he deserves that, at least. Um, right, so a 9-8 win against Houston last time out. Hanayas, Chapman and Schofield Sam with home runs. Hanayas with three hits. Two hits for Susek, Schofield Sam and Chapman. What I really need is a few players to really start heating up now. Gorski says it isn't hot, but that was when he was down back up at the majors. Um... I mean, that is really, really poor. 1 for 25 over 13 games. Um, right, Hunter Brown up against Carlos Del Rosario here. 3-1 win. Okay, we're back at 500. And we're in the playoffs as the Boston Red Sox have absolutely tailed off here. Um, wow. Okay. Right, so now we're up against the Padres. How many games have we got left? of the year. Grant Holman's actually back. Would it be a good idea to bring him straight in though? You know what? Screw it. I'm sending Actually I'm gonna send Gar Gardair back down because he hasn't been great at all. And I'm literally just gonna i I'm gonna put Grant Holman straight back in and hopefully he can provide some good innings for us. You know he's got the stamina he was great. I say great. He was good enough earlier this year. So, right. JPC is up against you, Darvish. Here, every game is monumental for us. Here, um, we have. Five series to go, actually. Um, Right, so let's get straight stuck into this against the Padres. And Ch Workman seems to not be batting as well for average, but he obviously is hitting for a lot of power now. 20 home runs already. Um, Jack Moss, 133 OPS plus. Doesn't hit a lot of home runs, though. I say that he's only played, I mean, he's played about half the game. I mean, he probably would be about, on about 25 to 30 home runs on the year. I will get an updated scouting report on the major league team though. I mean Lorenzo Calero is up to an eighty potential here. And a one four five OPS plus. So this year he's really been <laughs> obviously he was good in I mean good enough in rookie ball last year. I moved him up just because he was good enough ratings wise. And he has gone with a one six four, one seven four, one four five OP OPS plus and absolutely tore through the minors this year for us. Um Lorenzo Carrier, I wouldn't be surprised to see him up in the majors you know, bought by the end of next year. The way he's going at the moment, um, as much as yes, Brenton Doerr has been great for us this year with a 110 OPS plus. Um, he just doesn't quite have the potential of someone like Lorenzo Carrier to come in. And, you know, then we've got a fantastic infield, you know, Gage Workman, um, Dale Hanayas, Matt Chapman, 
Z uh, Jack Moss. We've still got Isaac Pacheco. Um, absolutely fantastic infield. We got Susak as well. He's batting really well at catcher. Um, and we, you know, we really then start to improve on our outfield, which is great to see. We've obviously still got Paulinho, who's still a top prospect, as well as Davis and De Los Santos, Gardea. I will actually get up some updated reports on these guys as well. So if I get them on Danny DeAndrade as well, how's he been getting on? Above league average by the looks of it. Eduardo Rivera is looking okay. And then the rest of the mine leagues. How he's been put. I mean, all of these guys haven't been good, but I wouldn't have expected them to be great by any means. Obviously, they have only just came up their first year in professional baseball. Let's get some updated with scout reports on these guys. Molinax. Melendez and Pineda. Right. So let's finish this year out. Um, hopefully on the other end of this we'll be in the playoffs. So you're up against you Darvish here with JP Sears. Eleven six win. That is huge for us. Um three hits for Moss, three hits for Bellinger, two hits for Hanayas, home run for Moss, Susak, Chapman, Bellinger. JP Sears gave up five runs as well. So really our offense absolutely carried us there. Because um, we were lit down a little bit by the pitching, giving up six. But um, obviously scored 11, so that's all that matters. We got the win. Um, so as Arlo's up now, he's realistically been our best pitcher this year. Up against Sean Manea with a 6-3 loss. And he gave up six runs over five innings. Tatis hit a home run. Sean Manea was was well good enough for them to get the win. Pitched seven innings. All right. Harvest Arizo, we're back to five hundred. Three games above the Red Sox though. And a three and a three nil win. If I'm honest though, what I will say is I have, you know, I've we've been so lucky because we're only one game above five hundred that the rest of the league have been really, really poor. I mean, look at the, <laughs> I mean, if we look at the NL here, what um, Cardinals would be in the playoffs on our side, Nationals would be in with a shout. The Atlanta Braves, who've what eleven games above five hundred, aren't even in the wild card spots here. Cincinnati Reds have been fantastic. They're ninety six and fifty three, and still not even first in the division. Um, oh, they are. Sorry, <laughs> I was thinking that's you know an awfully good record. Um, yeah, Jay Allen cut eight to so eighty grade potential, eighty grade potential, eight seventy five on a Royo. We've got TJ Friedel. Carter, Carter as well here. They're a very, very good team. Um, it's no surprise to see how well they've had, how how good of a year they've had at least. So this is a big series for us. I mean, up against the Angels here, who are playing very, very well, and we're three games ahead of the Red Sox. So we do whatever we do, we do not want to get whitewashed here by the Angels. So first game up is Ken Waldachuk up against Reed Detmans, lefties versus lefty. And we start off with an 8-6 loss in this series. Three hits for Susex, four hits for Chapman, two hits for Worm. It looks like we went to extra innings. Yeah, the we went to 12th and they scored three runs. Who was that? So Woodchuck had a good enough game. But Schreiber gave up four runs. Wow. Um, in 1.1 innings. Zach Jackson also gave up two runs. Oh, right, Griffin Canning up against Roy Basalinas. Eleven five loss, and now the Red Sox are only one game back. You know, the one thing I said I didn't want is to get whitewashed here by the Angels. You know, we you know it's not long ago we were up there with them, and now we really are fighting for our lives for the spot in this wild card. Um, right, so Ben Brown up against J.P. Sears. 
6-3 win. Thank God we at least pick up a win. And John Schreiber's out for four weeks. Might as well put him on the 60-day IL at this point. He's not going to make it back for the playoffs. Um, is there anybody I can send back up? I mean, Hardea is now at 70-75. And that's happened this month. And his velocity has gone up to 97 to 99. His stuff's improved. His potential stuff. I mean, wow. I mean, at this point, I feel like he has to come up. Um, He wasn't great the first time he came up. But, you know, now, you know, given those ratings, I don't see, you know, there's no way he can't. Um, 142 OPS plus Lorenzo Carry. That's fantastic. Um, Right, so if we go to our pitching and we will sort our bullpen out, we won't change our starters. So they want Gardea, Gardea starting at closer. You know what? I'm just I'm gonna be okay with just letting the manager decide this, just because <laughs> you know my judgments don't seem to have been going well this season so far. So um, we'll leave it at that. And we get this series underway up against Cleveland with a Zylo starting us off against Tristan McKenzie with an 8-2 win. Zylo pitched seven innings with only two runs given up. Matt Chapman with a home run. Moss hit two homers. Three hits for Moss. Two hits for Schofield Sam, who does seem to be batting really quite well. 113 OPS plus still. Moss with a 140 OPS plus. I mean, you would expect it with these ratings. He's now at 80 overall. Um, we think he'll make multiple all-star trips. He's someone we would really should be looking at locking up long term. I do think. Um, so Herbert Del Rosario up against Kevin Herget, seven three loss. So at least we have surpassed the Tigers. So we're now in for like a three-team race here, but. It's, you know, every win's going to count here, really. So we're now at 500 and we're still <laughs> second in the wildcard um, sort of rankings, I would say. Um, right, Keegan Akin up against Kane Ken Walderchuk. And it's an 8-1 loss. Walderchuk, poor game, four runs given up. Haman, two runs given up. Right, Roy Basalinas, let's get a win. Against Eric Lauer. And a 5-3 win, which is huge for us. A couple of hits for Doyle, a couple of hits for Workman. Salinas had a good game. I mean, two runs given up over five innings, but um, I'll take that. Hardea with the save. Gardea. Um, right. So what have we got left? What, eight games? few players retiring here. No big deal. Alright. So up against Kansas here. Right, Zylo. 3-2 win. And we're on a run streak. Okay, fantastic. Um, so in terms of our player development update. So Dylan Adkins potential has gone up. It seems he's not playing. He's not doesn't seem to be um batting very well though anymore. Um, he started off the year obviously very hot there. Um, Papano's still improving his pitching ratings even though he's not pitching. Um, <laughs> which is a bit frustrating to see. Um, then we've got Marauders who's dropping slightly. Luke Boyers is improving. Mullinax, who is improving, which is great to see, um, especially his contact as well, because he is someone who has the potential to start at centre field because of his um, outfield range and defence. Um, Golden's looking good. Carrier is just looking fantastic. He's already a current power of 65 with a potential power of 75, and he's batting in double A. I mean, the fact the power's already developed to this point, he he could be a real, real <laughs> top, top power hitter in the league. Um, so he's definitely someone to look watch out for, Carrier. Um, in terms of sort of the major league players around here, um, contacts improved DeLuca. 
Her eyes, eye improves. Um, Sarah for Sam's contact drops, which is a shame to see. Jack Moss's, you know, current contact and potential contacts improves. His current and potential power range are up to 75, which is massive. Um, really, really good to see there. Um, I have no idea why he's only played 80 games. I think I only brought him up. Yeah, I did bring him up after quite a fair way through AAA this year. But he is looking fantastic. Um, really happy I did that. Obviously, it gives well, obviously a minute play of the service time. Because they were coming massively in handy for players like Jack Moss. Um, Daniel Susak's power improves here. Really good to see. Um, Juarez Del Rosario's stuff improves. Up to 75 stuff as a starter. And he's got 80 grade potential now. Um, elite level talent. Um, his change is fantastic. The two other pitches are okay. But um, that's great to see. Gardea obviously now is looking like a killer closer. Um, Junga's improving, Lowe's improving his control, Mejia, Montgomery is dropping, which is partly due to that injury, I believe, though, so I wouldn't imagine he'll come back, he's actually had a good year this year, you know, 2.4 2 war, um, 87 fit minus, which is great to see, let's finish off this year, year, 4-2 loss against Kansas. Um, now, only one game back are the Red Sox. Um, right. Herbert Del Rosario, he's improving. Come on. With that eight, what, 80 grade, 75 grade stuff as a starter. And he cannot get it done. With a 3-1 loss. And was that down to him? He gave up three runs. But he did pitch 7.1 innings. But still, it's not good to see. The bats weren't fantastic this game. Um, obviously, only scored one run. Over seven and seven hits. Right. So, Kevin Waldachuk up against Jacob de Grom. Which is not the pitch you want to be facing at this stage of the year. Four three win. That is huge. So we're back at five hundred, and the Red Sox have dropped back with a four three win here, which could be that could be a playoff clinching win. Waldachuk with one run given up over five innings, two runs given up by Mejia, which is not good to see. Jack Moss with a home run. Obviously now his powers elite. Um, you know with eighty grade contacts and um <laughs> seventy five home run power. If that discipline comes up to sixty five as well, he will be, you know, realistically one of if not the best bat in the league. He will be fantastic. Um, Jack Flaherty up next with Roy Bissell that's pitching for us. If we get this win, we twelve to win and the Boston Red Sox lose and are eliminated. So we make the playoffs by the skin of our teeth. Um, in the last wild card spot here, Chapman with a home run, Ke Bellinger with a home run, four hits for Pacheco, who's now only batting at league average. Really has tailed off a fair bit this year. Um, Workman as well, great, great stuff. Bellinger a couple of hits, Chapman a couple of hits. Um, right, let's finish off the year. This game doesn't matter so much. We've got Isaiah Lowe pitching. Hopefully he doesn't get injured. Um... 4-3 loss. And we are up against... So we skip through to the playoffs. So we made it through... By the skin of our teeth after tailing off massively at the end of this year. So we were what? 14-11, 560 win percentage. Really had a poor um, month in May. Then picked up in June with a six, you know, six five three winning percentage. Were great in July before having an absolute stinker of a month in August before picking back up above five hundred for September. Um, really, <laughs> at least we turned it around in September. Um, October obviously we only played five games there, but um, really not a good year for us. And um, now we've got to play through the wild card up against the Baltimore Orioles. Who are looking, I mean, their playoff 
rotation, they got Brandon Woodruff, Grayson Rodriguez, and Kevin Gorsman. Kevin Gorsman isn't looking very good at all, though. Um, he looks awful. I don't know what's happened to him. It might well just be... I know I say things the same. Um, and he is stuck on a 23 million a year contract. But he's only got two more years left. But he is massively dropped and tailed off there. Gorsman. Um, but Grayson Rodriguez hasn't been great either. Neither has Brandon. I mean, Brandon rudolph has been good. Um, obviously, they've got Jackson Holiday, uh, Adley Rushman, Gunnar Henderson. They've got Miguel Sano as well now, which is an odd one. Um, hit 27 home runs for them. Heston Kerstad, obviously, former first round pick. Um, wow. So, quite an eventful episode, I would say. You know, to the least, um, really, really, you know, scared ourselves there by absolutely dive bombing and tanking off the year. But we made the playoffs by the skin of our teeth, which is huge. Um, so obviously, next episode we'll run through the playoffs and we'll go take a deep dive into all of the stats, go through sort of the mindly system, sort that all out, um, and then hopefully. I mean, hopefully, obviously, last year we won the division, had an even better the year than this, and we lost in the divisional series straight away. So hopefully we can turn it around and have a bit more of a playoff run this year. Obviously, we made it in the playoffs and that's all that matters. Anything can happen from here on out. So hopefully that is the case and we can actually make a good playoff run here. Um, what I will say though is, you know, if you can leave any comments down below. Obviously, I mentioned about obviously going over to... Um, the last going over to Las Vegas and relocating for next year. If you can let me know what you think about that, obviously I do think that's something I'm going to do. Give the comments in the last video, but if you're unhappy with that, just please let me know. Or you're looking to support it, you know, let me know again down below, and that'd be a great help. Thank you. And um, also as well as that, if anyone has any sort of suggestions on what really went wrong for us, because I, you know, batting wise. Everyone look, look, has looked great in terms of our bats. I mean, I say that, and now going into this, um, Pacheco tailed off a slightly below league average. Bellinger, Geloff, Muncy, um, Gorski, obviously DeLuca and Langoliers. But, you know, we had some really, really good um, bats who started the majority of games. So, um Really quite unsure why we tailed off. It was, and it, was, it wasn't even like we it carried on, though. We did improve for um, September. It really was just the August that really stuffed us up. Um, so if you could let me know down below, that'd be great help. Thank you. Obviously, picture-wise, we were not bad at all. Um, you know, if we go through to FIP. We were first in FIP. Our field and engine... And field our fielding independent pitching was great. If we're not, you know, taking into account our defense, our pitching war was great, our strikeouts, we had, but our defensive efficiency was very, very poor. So maybe that's something we will look to improve next year. Is the easiest thing to improve on um, OTP by having, you know, having good defense. So maybe that is what has slightly let us down. I might try and make some changes for this for the playoffs here. See you know, see what I can do in regards to that. But you know, do let do leave a comment down below and like the video. Yeah, it'd be a great help to me. And also subscribe as well if you've been enjoying this enjoying the series. Do um subscribe subscribe down below. Um just to let you know, you know, you know, be enjoying the series and there's plenty more to come of this. But um thank you very much for watching anyway and I'll see you in the next one.